Hermann Goering, Albert Speer, Alfred Jodl, Did you recognize any of those names? I just read this fascinating book called Mission at Nuremberg, and it's about an American Lutheran pastor who served Nazi war criminals that were awaiting trial in Nuremberg after World War II. The name of the pastor was Henry Gerke. The names that I shared with you were some of those high-ranking Nazi officials. If you knew who they were before, or now that you know who they are, do you have an emotional reaction? Maybe anger burns inside of you for what took place in history many decades ago. Maybe sadness. Maybe a hope that it never happens again. Maybe a desire to continue to see justice served when atrocities happen. You know, some parts of that book were really, really hard to read. I have another name for you, Nicodemus. Do you remember that name? We hear about him in John chapter 3. It says, now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He's a high-ranking official too. At the time of Jesus, he was a Pharisee. And it says he came to Jesus at night. Came at night because he didn't really want any of the other Pharisees to know that he was talking to Jesus. The, many of the Pharisees didn't get along well with Jesus. But this is what he said. He said, Rabbi, give them a title of respect. We know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. Now Nicodemus opened the door wide open and Jesus took it. He stepped right in. He cut right to the chase. He didn't waste any time. This is what he said to Nicodemus. He said, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. No one can see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus wanted to see the kingdom of God. He wanted to be a part of the kingdom of God. But how do you think he was trying to get there? A Pharisee? He was all about morality. He was all about right and wrong. He was all about justice. He was all about doing God's will. Extra rules. Living the right life. Giving generously to the temple. That's what Nicodemus was about. How do you think he would have reacted to the people like I shared with you? Maybe anger too. Maybe a desire for justice there. But did you listen to what Jesus said? This must have been shocking to Nicodemus. Because Jesus said no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. That means that everyone needs to be born again. Everyone. Nicodemus, you, me, criminals, those sitting on death row, your neighbor down the street, a drug dealer, your children, old men, young ladies. It doesn't matter who you are, everyone needs to be born again. It must have been shocking for Nicodemus. And maybe it's a little shocking for us too. Now, please understand, I am not telling you that you are a Nazi or a war criminal. But I do think it's important for us to understand the seriousness of who we are, just the same way that Jesus wanted Nicodemus to understand the seriousness of who he is. You see, Jesus said, flesh gives birth to flesh. I teach an Old Testament class. And I get to walk through the, the beginning chapters of the Bible and human history. And do you remember how long it took for sin to manifest itself in one of the most atrocious ways? Murder. You remember how many generations it was until there was murder? One. That's right. Adam and Eve, who had been created in the image of God, after they fell, took that fruit they weren't supposed to take, disobeyed God, turned away, 
demonstrate a lack of trust and love for God. They had children in their own image. And I'm sure that Cain and Abel, they were probably just as cute and just as cuddly and just as precious as any other baby that you've seen. And there was a lot of joy in their family until there wasn't. Until a hatred started to grow in one of those hearts. And he lured his brother into the field and then he allowed that hatred to course through his veins, course through his arms as he struck and he struck and he murdered his own brother. Flesh gives birth to flesh. One generation. And every single generation since then has been born in the same flesh. We are born with a sinful nature. And that sinful nature manifests itself in us in many, many different ways. And so everyone needs a new birth, a new life. And Nicodemus knew this isn't something we can do. He said, how can somebody enter into their mother's womb a second time to be born? You can't do that. No, it's impossible. It is impossible for us to carry this out. And just like we didn't choose to be born, we can't choose to be born again. But God does what's impossible for us. Jesus said flesh gives birth to flesh, but he also said the spirit gives birth to spirit. And an amazing and wondrous and marvelous act of his amazing mercy and grace, God sends the Holy Spirit to change us, to change our hearts, and to take away our hearts of flesh, sinful flesh, and to give us his spirit, to make us alive again. In a wonderful and mysterious way, the Holy Spirit can change us. And Jesus said, The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear it sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born in the Spirit. It isn't something you might be able to see outwardly, but the Holy Spirit works inside of us. And that's what's so amazing about baptism. There's a Holy Spirit. He can, he can do things in all kinds of ways, but he chooses to use something simple that we can see, water. And as that water is connected with God's word, the Holy Spirit is at work in a wonderful, mysterious way to change us and change our lives, to give us a new birth and a new life so that we can see the kingdom of God so that we can be a part of the kingdom of God, so that you are a part of it. What an amazing and wonderful blessing. That no matter who you are, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, the Holy Spirit has the power to change your life because of another name. A name I'm sure you will recognize, the name of Jesus. The name that was put on you in your baptism. The name to which the Holy Spirit connects you to his death, his burial, and his resurrection to new life. And it's in his name that we give thanks to God and we pray. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would help us to recognize our deep need for you for the forgiveness of our sinful flesh and the forgiveness of our sins, but also to rejoice that you have changed our hearts through the working of your Holy Spirit and the working of water and word, where the Spirit is active to change us and to give us a new life. Help us to recognize that everyone that we see and meet in our life has that same need and that you've given this gracious gift that is for all people, young, old alike. All this we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Come behold the wondrous mystery In the dawning of the King He the theme of heaven's praise Robed in frail humanity In our longing, in our darkness Now the light of life has come Look to Christ who condescended Took on flesh to ransom us i
Father's mystery He the perfect Son of Man In His living, in His suffering Never trace nor stain of sin See the true and better Adam Come to save the hell-bound man Christ the great and sure fulfillment of the law in Him we stand. Come behold the wondrous mystery, Christ the Lord upon the tree, in the stead of ruined sin. Hangs the Lamb in victory See the price of our redemption See the Father's plan unfold Bringing many sons to glory Grace unmeasured, love untold in power resurrected as will we